Hello, everyone. Are we ready, Whitney? I think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, hi, my name is Gabby Hernandez. I'm the Open Education Librarian from the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. And thank you all so much for joining me today in this session. I feel super honored that you decided to take some time to view this session. Um, presenting about this project has been in the works for a while. And as promised, I dedicate this session to Ashley Morrison, who strongly encouraged me multiple times to share this with the community. And I'm so glad she pushed me. So in this session, I'm gonna show you how to use a program tracking template that I created. I use this tool every single day as an open education librarian, and I hope this will help you organize your OER and textbook affordability initiatives and data. So before we begin to look at the template itself, I wanna provide a little background in hopes that you can relate um, to how all of this came about and maybe see some parallels between our programs and our needs as open education practitioners. UT at UTRGV, we have what we call the Textbook Affordability Project, and I'm going to drop a small link to that. And we also have a community document for this session as well that you can take a look at. And let me pull that so our program grew from a conversation between a faculty member and the dean of the library and in the beginning we didn't even have a scholarly communications librarian much less a full-time position dedicated to open education and our dean of libraries decided to reorganize the library to be begin supporting various open initiatives and in fall 2018 we put our first call for oer adoption grants and by fall 2020 we had a full-time open education librarian so I'm sure as you can see, our programming, outreach and engagement and funding began rapidly expanding, which meant so did our data. And by the time we had the full-time open education librarian, we had data from three people in three different formats and we were constantly trying to figure out who had what and in what format did it exist. And so we compound all of that with the expectation of open education programs of answering the seemingly impossible question of who is using OER on your campus. And even with all the data, it's a very, very difficult question to answer. So with some research, I realized that I needed some type of program. And what I really wanted was a customer relationship management um, software or CRM to help me track not only faculty engagement, but our funding and impact, as well as our processes. I wanted like a one-stop shop, but you know, we work for libraries um, and we all know that there's extremely limited funding when it comes to libraries and purchasing things. So um, I kind of put it on the back burner until Airtable started popping up in the open education listservs and it piqued our interest but then once we started looking into it, the other hurdle that we all are so familiar with came, which is the lack of time to like learn a new software and build a database from scratch uh, alone to fit a unique need that for me was still a gray area at the time. But for all of um, our Texas residents in the audience, some time ended up falling into my lap, which ended up being the freeze of spring 21. So we all remember Texas shut down. Um, somehow I ended up with power all week, which was super rare. I don't know how that happened, but I did. And so I decided that I needed a project that I could take care of on my own where I wasn't talking to anybody because nobody else in the state had power. So at this time, so we're talking spring 21, we're talking about, I had three years of piled up data and this was everything we had four different grant cohorts. We had three library license outreach efforts. We had two open, uh, open textbook review cohorts. We had one new grant in the process that we had just created. We had lists of interested faculty. We had the beginnings of course marking information um, as well as professional development registration information. So like 
there was just data everywhere. And it was, like I said, in all different formats, and it was housed from three different people, two within the library and one was a faculty member. So we really just had stuff everywhere. And I decided during the freeze, that was it. I was gonna do it. I was gonna sit down and I was gonna compile the data. So I got into Airtable. I watched two webinars, two one hour webinars and got to work building my database. And the, my goal was to compile the data we had already had and create a way to track faculty engagement over time. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and share again the community document because now I'm gonna take some time, I'm gonna switch over, switch gears. So that, you know, my background story, um, I'll be sharing my screen and showing you how to use the database that I created. And what I was able to do was make a template and I uh, kind of narrowed it down a little bit from my monstrosity that I have um, to where it was when I first began. And so I will be sharing that template with you. And I could literally talk about this for hours, but we only have one. So I'm gonna talk more about the why behind each uh, tab I created and how to use the template itself. Not so much talk about how to use Airtable, but fear not, um, because in the community document, there is a section. So if you're interested in continuing this conversation or learning more, or even doing a deep dive or sharing what you do, you can feel free to put your contact information and hopefully some conversations can happen outside of this uh, one hour time frame that we have. So I'm gonna take a few minutes to share my screen uh, for you to get into the community document. And if you'd like to follow along with me, I have the textbook affordability tracking template linked in there for you. Okay, so yay, there's lots of people in the template. So here we are, um, here's the community document. I have the template here for you. I have some vocabulary. These are the two, these are the, the, the two webinars that I watched, as well as all of their training. And they were really, really, really great. Um, I'm, I'm telling you, if I can do it, you can do it as well. Um, so thank you so much. And this, if you clicked on the tracking link, you can do this presentation in two ways. Uh, you can just sit back and relax and kind of watch and use the recording later, uh, which is what I recommend. Or if you, you can try to follow along with me if you are uh, familiar with Airtable. So here, I'm gonna click right here. This is the textbook affordability tracking template that I have created for you. And you can click here to use it. And what I'm gonna show you is from scratch. We're gonna pretend like you don't even know what Airtable is. You've never heard of it. You don't have an account. If you do have an account, you can sign in and it'll put this into your account. But I'm gonna show you from step one, how you can use this. So I'm gonna create my free account. Put my information and when you do this it will kind of prompt you with a few like let's get started but you can just skip all of these which is what i'll do for today so i'm going to skip i'm not going to share it with anybody and here we are i have my account um, it will give you 14 days of the pro trial now that's the paid subscription but everything that i show you today works 100 in the free version so I'm going to go to my workspace. So here we are. Okay. So speaking to all the open education practitioners in the audience today, we are asked to oversee so many projects that can very, very easily become overwhelming. And the labor of keeping track of all of these initiatives can be intense. So hopefully this template can be a way to help solve or relieve some of those issues. Airtable itself is a platform that gives you the flexibility to create what you need in a way that works for you. And I like to think of it as um, making spreadsheets that talk to all the other spreadsheets you made. So they're all connected. And there, like I talked about, there's a variety of price ranges. There's the free version, there's the paid version. Um, I started in the free version and um, 
after I used it for a while, I was able to show why we needed a paid version. So I do operate in the paid version now, but in the beginning for quite a while, I was just functioning under the free version. And Airtable has its own unique vocabulary, which I've also shared in the community document. So I'll just go over it very quickly. Um, Airtable calls these workspaces and to think of the workspaces like your folder. This is your folder of information. You can share them with people um, if you like, or you can have them private. So you can have multiple workspaces with multiple types of information. This, the template I created for you is called a base. So you think of that as the spreadsheets themselves. And if I click into it, it takes you to the spreadsheet. I'm going to skip these little pop-ups for just a second. Okay. So this is the base. It's the spreadsheet. There's also tables. So those are the tabs. So kind of thinking about using Excel or Sheets, you know, you have your tabs across the bottom. So that's the same thing here. Uh, you have records, which is your rows of information. You have fields, which is what type of information you want to collect, and those are your columns. And then we also have views. Now, pretty much this can kind of look, if you're just looking at this middle section, it can kind of look like Excel or Sheets, but this part is the part when I first started that I was a little overwhelmed with. But all this is, is it's viewing your information in different ways. So it's not different information, it's all the same, but it's permanently sorted for you to see and to easily get to. So those are what views are called. Um, and I have already added some um, fake contacts. So you can see what it looks like when you start building instead of me trying to show you from scratch. So this will help you get a view of what yours could possibly look like. And Something that's also different from Excel and uh, Sheets is you see lots of colors. Now, not everybody works well in colors. I do, I love colors, I'm a color coding queen, um, but it's not required for you to do so. All the colors are showing you is just different groups of information. So you can see here I have colleges and you can see each college is a different color and the departments, I have them relating to the colors of the college. That's the way I think, may not be the way you think, but what's beautiful about Airtable is that you can edit any of this to fit your needs. Um, I just kind of gave you a head start. Um, across the top here, uh, below the tabs, you can see here, these are different uh, features that you can use that are similar, like filtering and grouping, um, hiding fields. You know, that's pretty similar to, again, Excel or Sheets. But at the bottom down here, it took me a while to find this, but I use this regularly. And this gives you summaries of your information. So I know that I don't have any duplicate emails in here because it's 100% unique. And I have already set it all up and done all of the, the formulas for this to also reflect in yours. So everything you see, it'll automatically do it for you. Um, so yeah, so what do we have? We have a few different tables. So what did I create? I created a place where I could put all of my contacts. So one thing that was super important for me was if I get an email from a faculty and you know, we have hundreds of faculty. If I get an email from a faculty member, I wanna know where are you in your OER journey? Have I never, have you never reached out to us before? Have you applied maybe once or twice? Have you attended? Um, a professional development session. That's what I wanted to track. So that's what this uh, sheet will track for you. That's what this table will track. Um, the second thing I have here is a grant. So let's say this is to mimic uh, a grant that has some sort of return on investment. So a, a cost, enrollment, and savings. So that's what I have created here for you. We do have an adoption grant. So this is how I, I track savings um, and faculty who are engaged in that. I have another tab here for you created. And this tracks, let's say, a grant or something that doesn't have some sort of student impact. Let's say it's just a professional development grant, or maybe it's an open textbook review. 
and all you have is like uh, maybe an exit survey and that's all you really have, that is reflected in this type of grant. I also have a place to organize OER requests. Uh, they can, I know for me, it, they got out of hand really quickly. So I, I made a way to have them all in one spot as well as providing an overview of these are all the grants we've offered and the total impact from everything, as well as the outreach and uh, outreach overview. So how, which outreaches did we provide and who registered and who attended? So keeping track of that bird's eye view of how many people, again, are engaging in our program. So as you can see, everything is in one spot. I have all of my information, everything here, easily for me to switch quickly back and forth from uh, um, thing to thing that I, you know, that I keep track of or that I'm in charge of um, implementing on campus. So now that you know a little bit of the overview of like kind of what this could do for you, I'm going to show you how to do it. So here, I'm going to start back with my contacts. This is the most important piece for me. Um, and so it's very, very easy to add people. So let's say that I received a new person. I'm just going to press plus and I'm ready to add another person. So I'm going to put their name, their email. And then here in department, what I've done is I have, if you double click it, if you double click any of these top pieces, this is where you can edit. Um, I went ahead and gave you all of the departments that I input by hand. Obviously these aren't gonna match perfectly with your departments, but I thought maybe I could give you a head start. So this is every single department that's at UTRGV. And um, they're all here for me if I need to add another one. So for you, maybe you don't have uh, University College. You can just press the X, it deletes it for you. And if you want to add a new one, you just click Add Option, and here's the new department. And there it is, as easy as that, and you save it. This will pop up a couple of times throughout, the, throughout our session, but all this is saying that it's changing all of the fields, which is what we want. So there we go. I have my person and let's pretend they are in the dance program and they belong to fine arts. So like I said, I color coded to match um, because I am who I am, but you can work, make it fit the way that matches best for you. And if you want, you can add the courses taught, you can click here if they're using OER, but this section right here is what I find to be the most important, which is how are they coming? How did they come to our program? And how are they interacting with our program? So again, I have some preloaded options here for you that you could use, or you can add ones that make sense most for your uses. So I'm gonna pretend that Gabby here was a cold call, and I'm gonna put that in both sections. And so there you have it. It was there, everything's already made for you. You can just start putting in names. Um, and then what I have for you built in on the side, I have, again, these views, which is pre-sorted information. So this can help answer some of those questions that we get, or I know I've gotten in the future, which is one of those questions is, um, uh, which college uh, is interacting with OER the most? And so what this can do is if you click right here, faculty by college, because you've put all that information in, it's gonna automatically group all of your colleges and how many faculty are engaging in it. So you can do it once you insert it once, you can just click that button and it'll auto sort it for you. Um, it'll give you the count of how many are in each group and then it's also sorted so it'll group similar uh, departments. So we have three liberal arts, two in criminal justice, one in philosophy. So that's how that works. I also have it sorted by department. If that's something you're interested in, maybe, you know, you want to do outreach to a specific department, but you're like, well, how engaged are they? You can go in and say, oh, I'm going to go talk to biology. And I know that Caden was a grant applicant. So that might be somewhere you want to start. So it's, it, it helps you again, keep track and not have to keep it all in your mind. 
You can also, uh, I have here by point of contact. So, you know, a question I've gotten to is like, how are faculty coming to your program? How do faculty learn about OER? And I can say, you know, based on this pretend information, I can say, oh, look, I have the majority of our faculty are coming through because of grants. So our faculty are very um, interested in grants and that's, and that's how they're gonna come. So we wanna make sure we continue the funding. So this helps build the advocacy for your own program as well. And so some unique things, let's say um, you wanna add a faculty, you can, you can add them anywhere. Like I said, all of these uh, sheets are connected to each other. So let's say I have a new person that came to me from the engineering department. I can just uh, click on that, I can put their name, Again, their email. It already came, they're at the same college, engineering and computer, and maybe they were civil engineering. So there we go, I have a new faculty. And if I go anywhere else in this view, that new faculty came up. So you don't have to worry about, oh, did I update this spreadsheet? Did I update that spreadsheet? It's gonna automatically update for you everywhere. There he is again, civil engineering, new faculty. So that's what the contact page can do for you. Um, I'm going to pause this for a second. I don't have my chat up, so I'm not sure if I'm getting that. So let me find that for just a second. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to keep going so that way we can talk about it at the end. Hopefully we'll have enough time. So for grant A, so let's say you're tracking grants. When I work for my grants, I worked uh, I have my data entry. So this is that plain, simple, like this is where you can input information. It's always there. Or you can work in groups. So when I'm working with groups, I like, when I'm working with grants, I like to work in groups. So I know exactly which grant I'm talking about. So here we can see that I have a pretend grant that happened in spring 22. These are all the faculty that participated, their emails, their departments, their colleges, all that wonderful information we have from the contacts. Uh, imports over. Um, I have their grant status. And what I've also done for you here is I have pre-done the formulas. So here this can show you, you can input the textbook cost, you can input the enrollment, and it'll give you the projected student savings. Now, of course, ROI is all done different ways, but this is the basic way that we do it. So I thought I would share that as well. Um, so that's what it can look like. And up here along the top, you can get that overall summary. So for spring 22 are the sum of all the textbooks that were purchased or that the faculty used was $245. Um, the number of students that were impacted were 205. And then the projected savings, you have almost 17,000. So I get this question a lot. How many, you know, how many students have we impacted in our program? I can go through here and just click on one button and it's already in there because you've updated it as you go. Um, so there's that. Let me show you how to input new faculty into a grant. So let's say fall 23 is just happening. So let's add some new faculty. I'm just going to click right here under the name. And let's say Alessandra is part of it, but let's say there is another, you can, so I'm sorry, you can click, when you click on the plus, it'll give you all of the people that you've already added to your contacts. But let's pretend you're looking and this person doesn't come up. That's okay, because you can add them here, you press enter, and now that new contact is everywhere in your database as well. And you can see here that it's not letting me type in any information right here because it's connected to the profile. And what that means is each of these names has a profile linked to it and you can click on it and here's all their information and all the ways that they've engaged in the program. So here is where I can put their email, their department, let's pick one, let's 
the occupational therapy, that's health professions. So you can see once you have everything added in, it can be very quick to add people. And they came to me because they're a grant applicant. And that's it. Now they're there and now all of their information has popped up. And you can do that as many times as you like. And then not only does this help me keep track of faculty, but it helps me keep track of what, what I'm doing. And so what I've here, done here in the grant status is I have added every single step in this grant is here. So I know exactly where everybody is. Um, for this semester, I am hosting 60 faculty in two different grants that are in two different like cohorts. So it's a lot of faculty to keep track of and I don't have a great memory. So this, what this does is it helps me switch in between the things that I'm running and keep track of who's in what step of each process. So again, that labor, remembering, trying to keep track. So I have all that information here. And again, you can add information there, you can take information, you can add the step by step of your grant process. And it's quite easy to do so. Um, but I want to show you something unique that I have. I have, again, these are the views, sorted information. I have uh, participants by college. So if you wanted to know who, which colleges were engaging in your program. But I also have this grant status little tab here. And depending on how you like to see information, this could be helpful. So you can just drag and drop. Let's see, Brody, we have their application. Paul attended the meeting. Tristan and Alessandra are both in progress. And another new contact has already has their stipend paid. So at a glance, you can just drag and drop and put them in their little spots. And when we go back again to our other views, see it's updated. So it goes back to everything being updated automatically. So I have them in here. And then again, like I said, you we have this already um, formulated for you. So let's say this textbook was $250. And they had, um, let's say 126 students register. And there it's going to pop up your projected savings without having to remember, pull out your calculator and doing all those things. So that's what um, this page can help you with. The same thing for this grant, it works the same way. You can add names, you can uh, change, you can move things around. But what I want to show you here is maybe you already have information and so compiling information it's super easy to copy and paste uh, so this is an example for one of my grants um, i asked for feedback so i wanted their feedback on the grant itself so here i have already preloaded information and what i'm going to do is make sure that my columns that i did in my google form match the columns that I have here. So it's really easy to copy and paste. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide some fields. So I'm going to click here, hide fields. I have their name. In my form, I did not ask for their semester. I did not ask for their email. And I did not ask for their department. And I did not ask for their college. I asked, is it effective? Are they using OER? Do they want to be contacted? And I asked them if they're interested in Pressbooks, because that was a new thing that we added. So I'm missing a column here, which, you know, for you, you'll want to um, modify to fit your needs. So all I'm going to do is just right click, just like you would do in Excel, and I will duplicate it. And there it gives me a whole nother thing. I can double click, press Pressbooks, Pressbook interest. So you can go in and edit these to fit what the questions you're asking your faculty. And I'm not even going to add any options because I'll show you how when you copy and paste, it's going to auto populate your options for you. So even faster. So I'm just going to save that. I have my new column, Pressbooks Interest, and a little notes section. So now this 
looks exactly the same as the data that I already have. So all I'm going to do is copy it, click on name, and paste it. It's going to ask if you want to expand. Yes, because you want everybody to show up. So I will continue. And there we have it. Everybody's already in. And that is how easy it is to upload information. All of these names now exist in my, sorry, all of these names now exist in my contacts. So everybody that participated is now here. This can take time. You can do more copy and pasting. Let's say you did get their email, and you can just copy and paste all their emails in. Um, I, we, time is of the essence always, and I don't always have time to go and clean up my data right away. But what I do always make sure that I do, because this again is important for my needs and for my program, I wanna keep track of how they came to me and I forget very easily. So you can drag and drop. So I have this as a grant applicant and all of these were grant applicants. So just like in Excel, you can drag down, you can also drag across and there I go. I can update all of this information later, but for now, at least I know I have their names in there and I know they're grant applicants. And that's it. And that's how you can um, add new people very easily by copy and pasting information you already have. And I did a lot of that when I was compiling all of that data that I had piling up for three years. Um, and here, remember, I said it'll auto populate. So here it auto populated my answers for me. You can always go in and clean this up if you like. So here it's showing kind of the same thing twice, already using OER and I am already using OER. And I can see at a glance, I don't have anything that's red here. So I'm just gonna remove that and change this color. I want it to be this color and save it, confirm all the changes and there it goes. It updated my information for me. Um, so that's a way to keep track of grants. Um, and if I go back to my contact fields, what you're gonna start seeing if I scroll a little bit is all of these kind of light blue grayish things. And what this is, is these are how they're connected. So Edgar is somewhere in the Grant A tab. Josie is somewhere in Grant A and Grant B and has sent an OER request. Um, so these, when you scroll through, it'll start, this is how it's showing you where all of your fields are connected. You can also look at them like I, like I said earlier, you can click their name and expand their record by pressing space. And here you can see how many ways they've interacted with your program. So this is what I do when I get that email. I'm like, oh, Josie reached out to me. Um, let me look at her grant profile. Oh, she was here, but she dropped. Oh, okay, so she might be contacting me because she wants to try again, things of that nature. So again, it's helping you remember who is doing what as your program grows. Um, some other things that you can track in here are OER requests. So again, this is just information that I have uh, that's important to me, but maybe for you, you don't want to know, let's see. Let's pretend that when, how the request was received is not important to you. You can either rename it and change it to something else, or you can just delete it. And so there we go, I deleted it but I can also undo it and bring it back. So there it's there. And with this information, it's just ways again for me to keep track of all the things that are happening. One unique thing that I, I really like from Airtable is the possibility to add files. So what I can do is let's say that this is my community document. I'm gonna download this really quick. So there I have it downloaded and I can add an attachment, drag and drop and upload. So it's a real quick way to just like 
the OER request is there. I uploaded it. I know where it can be. So when I'm looking again, I know, you know, instead of having to search through all of my folders, which is how I started in the beginning, I know that I can just come to my Airtable, take a look at maybe a topic, um, what maybe department the faculty came from, like, oh, have I done anything for the sciences? And I'll be able to really, at a glance, take a look to see what exists and what I have already collected. There's also, again, these views. So you can look at the request by semester. You can look at the adoption status. So again, this helps me remember, oh, I, I told Josie I was gonna do an OER request for her and I haven't sent her the search yet. Um, so that's all of, that's all there. If you're adding a new person, let's say that we did receive a new OER request. Uh, let's say, let me see, who was it from? I can look, let's pretend it was from Paul. So here he is, all of his information came through. Um, and let's see. You can add this information. Like I said, I have auto-populated some things that might be relevant for you um, to help you build your program out. And so, yeah, you can just, you know, we'll pretend that it was uh, the faculty referred them in spring 21. When did they request it? You can double click this, then you can pick a day. And so there you can see it just all kind of does it for you. Once you have it set up, it just does it for you and keeps track of the information. You can also, I don't know if you're interested, but um, there's a calendar built in here that'll show you, like maybe they ask you, when do you receive the most OER requests? You can take a look at your calendar and see like, when do you get bulk requests? Um, and maybe there's a pattern there. So just different things. And then I'll wrap up really quickly with this for the grant overview. This, I am like 90% sure there's a way to do this without having to do it manually. But again, I just learned from two webinars. Um, but what this is, what this does is I can put the grant that I host with a semester. So this is, I hosted grant A in spring 22. I can uh, change the status of it and I can put all the applicants and all the grantees it's very easy to add again there's that little plus mark you can add people who was granted and how many students it impacted what was that savings and something that i added here was the investment and i know sometimes that's a question too you know when it comes to budgets and funding how much did we invest um and there you have it and that'll that'll allow you to see a bird's eye view glance of your program's impact and the very same thing with the outreach overview like i talked about a little earlier so you know did you have a lot of people register did you have a, in the attendance rate you know what is the engagement and i added here too the ability to add chat documents and feedback forms if you like so that's pretty much um Airtable, this template, and a really, really quick overview. There's so many more things we could talk about. And if you do want to, you know, like I said, put your name in the chat. I mean, I'm sorry, in the community document. So, you know, we can hopefully continue the conversation um, a little bit later. I'm sorry. And in closing, um, I know it's a lot. There's a lot of information. It took me a long time to build this and then trying to think how would I scale it down to help. Um, but because of all of this information that I have collected over a couple of years, I was able to make an impact flyer so I could showcase like these are all the things we're doing. Um, in a little over a year from the creation of the first database, this, this, the very first day, um, I now have over 630 contacts in my contact section. And um, honestly, it's my favorite thing. My favorite thing is when I find a new faculty because at the end of the day, I can say we're making an impact and we reached a brand new person. And so I love finding new faculty. It just makes me super happy. Um, and this is only one of the bases that I have. I track 
almost everything now exclusively in Airtable. And that goes from course marking information to budgets to uh, high enrollment courses to student feedback surveys to I track my own work. So like I present it at a conference and I track it in my Airtable. And um, so there's just so, so, so much that you can do with it. This is only um, the beginning. So I know there's a few questions in the chat and I'll give you a few minutes. I'll, I'll stop talking. <laughs> Thank you, Gabby. That, that was seriously um, fantastic to get to watch and to hear about you um, using Airtable this way. So we'll go ahead and transition into the Q&A session. Um, we have had some questions in the chat, and so I'll start with the um, ones that were posted earliest. And they say, this is so amazing. The OER request table makes me wonder, can form, form submissions be directly into Airtable? Yes, that is a great question, and it can. Um, I don't have any forms, and it's super easy. So I just, you know, kind of pointed you to the top here. Uh, okay, let me go to data entry so it's not crazy. Okay, I pointed you to the top of the views, but to create more views, you do it down here. So you can add things, and here is the ability to do a form. And so when you click on this, you can say this is the OER request and you can create this new view. And here you are that you can edit it. What this is doing is it's duplicating the fields that I have. So it's gonna automatically dump the information there. So, you know, they can add their name. They can, you know, maybe you don't want the request received and, you know, it's not required and you wanna remove this field from the form. You can do that. Um, but maybe you do want the semester. You wanna know their name, the semester. Maybe you don't want date requested. So you can go in and edit it. And then the form looks like this. So obviously, you know, it's not a beautiful form because I just did it in a few seconds, but here is where the faculty can add their name and do it. Let's, so let me just do it. Um, uh, Whitney, I'm gonna use you. <laughs> Okay, so there were, oh, okay, I'm sorry, I have this different. So you would have to add it in a box, but if you play with it, I promise it's easy, but yes, you would let them type in their name and I'll just pretend it's a faculty that is already there. So remember we did Eva Jo, uh, fall 2019, her topic was OER, the status, I wouldn't obviously have that, and then they can submit it. So if I go back to that tracking, there is Eva Jo. Eva Jo is there, the name, all the information I have, um, and, and, and everything. This, they can do it for you. So you don't have to have different forms and different things. So that is a possibility. Um, we had another question. What have you done with the Airtable that is not available on the free version? Or is Great it just question. space? Great question. So part of it is the amount of records you have. That's a piece or like the amount that you can upload documents, space of that nature. But there's also different things. So with a pro version, you can do the extensions and things like the fancy things. And one that I do, I don't know what I just did to make. Anyways, one thing that I do love is there is an app that will show you if you have duplicate entries or like does the entry look similar to another one so that's how I clean up my data I go in because you know there's different ways that a faculty could type their name and if they type in their name two different ways for two different grants but they have the same email it'll pull that up for you automatically without having to go like line by line to see if you have um, to see if you have faculty that are duplicate or duplicate things. So there's a ton you can do with the pro version. Um, and honestly, once you start showcasing like what can you do, this is the impact that I'm showing, this is the engagement. It's really and it's not super expensive. It's, it gets easier to advocate for the need for those um, higher subscription level options. So Does it next, give us, 
Um, oh, yes, you, you beat me to it. Um, does yes. it give you a printable report? Yes, that was something I was supposed to show you. So what you can do is right here, you click here and you can download a CSV and that'll give you the Excel format. So you can you can print it that way. So it's a little bit easier to view as well as sharing. Uh, the way, uh, talking about the paid version, it's paid per collaborator. So I have to pay my subscription and the other librarian that works in this with me also has to pay a subscription. So what I have found a little workaround, you know, maybe if one person is the controller, then you can give reports through the CSV and then they can help you upload data and then you can then copy and paste that back. So depending on the financial capacity of your institution, you know, you may only be able to do one or two collaborators and maybe not the entire library, but yes, you can get printable reports. Um, a link to the community document. Oh, is that it? Thank you, Nicole, for sharing that. And if not, I'll add it again. Um, what made you decide to use this over Excel? I used it because what was happening with Excel was even from semester to semester, what I was noticing was our fields were not um, the same. So I was noticing maybe one semester we added a field, but then the second semester we offered that same grant, that field was missing. So we weren't always asking the same information over and over and over. So what this did was one, it helped me keep everything together. Two, it helped me make sure that we were asking the same things and collecting the same data from um, grant to grant to grant. And then also the ability for it to automatically just change, like it updates everywhere all the same time. So you don't have to worry about going back or, you know, having, a, you know, the hundred tabs across the bottom of contacts, but then those contacts aren't relating to then the grant Excel spreadsheet and the OER request spreadsheet. So with this, by having everything in here, I can then, like I said, look at those faculty names, click on them and here i'll even show you you can look at each profile so this is josie's profile for grant a and this is her profile for grant b and this is her oer request so i am not an excel genius and i don't know how to write the code and maybe that is a possibility but i don't know how to do that and airtable just does it for you so it was also the time of being able to learn something new and put it all in um, was what helped me decide choose Airtable over Excel. Um, thank you so much. I am enthusiastic about Airtable. Um, some of my OER practitioner buddies uh, make fun of me a little bit and they say I should be an Airtable spokesperson, but I'm not, I'm not here for that. But uh, I, I am really excited and I am glad you thought this was clear. Um, I am very passionate about this and I, and I love being able to say, OER is working, faculty are engaging and our engagement is increasing. And we all know that, but do we have an easy way to then say that or to prove it? And I, and I really, and Airtable has helped me prove the engagement is increasing every semester. Um, there is a mobile version, you can use the app. Um, I have never tried it. I tried to say, Give yourself an air table pause when I'm not in the office. But yes, there is an app um, to be able to like change and, and do things on the go. Um, so yes, that was that was that. I, I know it's a lot. I, I I could really talk for hours and hours and hours about this. But um, if you have any other questions or want to see something again um, or would like an example. Um, just ask, I'm happy to show. Thank y'all all so much. Thank y'all. I really, really hope this is, this is useful. Um, you know, as Ashley said, she really did not, I, sh she was tired of me showing my Airtable database. And I really do say that this is my second coworker. 
like without Airtable, I wouldn't be able to offer the things I offer at UTRGV. So I really, really hope that this could be helpful for you. Um, and feel free to use it. Feel free to share it. Feel free to, you know, share the links to other people. Like I, I really want to help um, other OER practitioners not duplicate our work over and over and over again. If I can help share something that I did, I hope that um, it'll help you as well. Thank you so much, Gabby. I haven't seen any more questions, but if somebody wants to, to post or to ask, go ahead. So I will, since we have a few extra minutes, I will share, um, I guess our impact. So how this was able, what we were able to create out of this. So this is um, like I sh shared earlier, the textbook affordability project. And in here I have impact. Um, so this was what I was able to create and we provided this to upper administration. So this was all Airtable data that I had collected. I was able to show faculty engagement and the increased participation over semesters, the engagement by college. Because of those predefined fields that I set for you, you'd be able to do the same thing. Um, we were able to look at return on investment for both our affordable for our adoption grants as well as unlimited user licensed textbook purchases. That's another thing that I track. Um, in Airtable. Um, so we were able to show showcase our savings and the number of students impacted from the beginning of our program. And we were also able to showcase our course marking information. So how many courses were marked zero cost and low cost and how that's progressed over the years. Um, this is some information we've gotten from our student feedback surveys that I have in Airtable as well. So once they've done an OER course, then they give us our feedback about it. So I was able to put that as well as faculty participation. So I was able to create an entire two page uh, flyer for upper administration about the impact of our program based on the data that I've collected um, slash hoarded uh, in Airtable. So I'll stop sharing my screen. Thank you so much. I'll go ahead and stop the recording. Um, but thank you so much, Gabby. And thank you for everybody who attended today. I hope you have um, a great rest of the conference. Thank you all so much.